so people come to us all the time because we've been doing mechanical testing for over 15 years. And as you guys know, technology actually moves faster than the ASTM standards or the FDA guidance documents. So how do you test something that doesn't have a standard? It's actually a very simple recipe, and so hence the 10 minute talk. But I'm hoping that you guys get some really important information on questions to ask to make sure that you are evaluating everything that you need to evaluate when you go to the regulatory agency to make sure that they're, they're asking you all the appropriate questions. So when you have a new technology and you don't really know how to approach the testing, this may be how you feel about it. I'm hoping by the end, this is not how you feel. So just to make sure that we're all in the same ballpark, I just real quick want to show you um, the goal of all orthopedic device companies, and that's to get regulatory clearance or approval. And as we all know, there are three classes of devices. One of the things that in orthopedics, the trend has always been if you can do a class two device or a 510K submission, that's the path that you want to go down. Well, I'm really pleased to announce that this past year I was part of the Entrepreneurs in Residence program with the FDA, which I was one of eight people in industry working with the FDA about how to streamline clinical trials. And so this document's been published. If you'd like a copy of it, send me an email and I will send it to you. I don't have the link, but I actually have the document. And what they've done is they took the three teams that were looking at how to reduce time in clinical trials and came up with the strategic objectives for 2014 and 2015. And in them, they contain streamlining the clinical trial pathway, looking at down classifying devices, and customer service. And not only did they lay those, those strategic goals out, but they laid out how they're going to do it and what metrics they're going to use so that they are a easier, more friendly, help us have great technology, and the first comment, first in human in the USA, that's from Dr. Duff Shuren. So again, if you guys would like the slides for the presentation or like this document, send me an email and I will get it to you. Mechanical testing 101, in case you weren't aware, we break stuff, but why are we breaking stuff? Well, for class two devices, this is the measure of safety and efficacy, um, and it is really the goal to characterize the device. Most of our testing is done to an ASTM or an ISO standard, and that's important because when you're doing new technology, that's actually gonna be the foundation of how we move forward and test something new. Why is it important that we do it correctly? Well, first of all, mechanical testing takes a lot of time, a lot of dollars, both in the cost of the specimens and the time that you do the testing. And if something doesn't go to plan the first time, you're gonna do testing again and that means more specimens and more time and dollars spent. So we wanna make sure that you actually put everything together and have the best test plan possible to maximize your time and dollars. Here's my favorite thing. Start with good science, because at the end of the day, we're engineers, we're, tech, we're technology folks. Um, the FDA reviewers are mostly engineers by background or science-based backgrounds. So good science and the fun foundation of science and good fundamentals, repeatability, accuracy, traceability, those are the things that you wanna start with. The next thing you wanna do is you wanna ask about indications. And then you're gonna look and see if there are other devices that have the same indication. So meaning you're pushing the envelope with your technology in a given set of indications that already exists. And you, I've listed some things that you can actually do searches on to see if there are other devices in that space. Do these other devices have a guidance document or an ASTM or ISO standard? That's gonna be your foundation for developing your protocol and your test methodology for your device. Now, keep in mind that every ASTM and ISO standard has a foundation of tests, axial compression, uh, torsion, shear, being done in both static or dynamic testing. But the reality is, is that every device has to be done in those modes. And that's the foundation of your testing. But when you're looking at your device, are there specific features or new characteristics that we need to do additional testing for to make sure that we've characterized that feature? And your predicate may not have that feature, and so it's up to us to come up with, is that device or that feature safe? And that will come out of your FMEA. So you'll, you'll go through your FMEA exercise, and if there's something that is of concern, we'll devise a custom protocol and test to characterize it relate it to research and published literature and make sure that it's safe, and then answer that specific question. And in those cases, you don't have to have a predicate device that tests against that feature, but you need to make sure that that feature is safe. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. So I've already talked about this a little bit. 
Is it static and dynamic testing? What modes are being tested? Again, this is the foundation for developing your protocol. So here I've literally listed all of the elements that you need to consider when writing your protocol. The goal of your testing, what testing you're going to do, your modes, sample size, environment. And I've listed all these because they will impact your results. And you want to be sure that you're repeatable with your results. And that so that two years later when the FDA comes back and says, well, how did you change this feature? Or did you change your manufacturing process? And can you repeat the testing and get the same results or similar results? One of the other interesting things about mechanical testing is if you have inconsistent results, i.e. different failure modes, that usually indicates that there's something going on in your manufacturing process. And so we're also here to help you go through your entire process. And that actually is where the validation and feasibility testing comes into play. Again, if you've got a new setup, do some feasibility testing to make sure that the setup makes sense. Do a gross reality check. Do the results make sense? Are they repeatable? Are they accurate? What factors will impact your testing? There you go. Here are the factors that will impact your testing. And you want to make sure that you have good justification for addressing every single one of these aspects. And that's one, one of the things that we can help you, or you guys have smart engineers working with you. Make sure that you're addressing all these pieces. Do you guys smarter? Do you feel smarter? OK. So you want to go forth and to be successful testing a new device. You want to make sure that you use good science, ask good questions, develop a thorough protocol, be aware of all the factors that will impact your testing, but make sure that you can go back to, again, accuracy, repeatability, traceability. Make sure that you're doing the right testing. Um, it is incredibly frustrating to have someone come to us and say, but we did this, this, and this. OK, so what answers did you get out of it? What information does it give you? So make sure that you're doing good testing that gives you the answers that you're looking for. There you go. If there's any questions, I am available.